Hello, and welcome back to the third webcast in MerchantLink's Payments Education Series. I'm Beth McGarity, Marketing Manager, and with me in the newsroom is Zachary Mitten, Manager of Learning and Development. In our last installment, we discussed the fees charged per transaction and how those fees are distributed amongst the players in the industry. For the next few minutes, we'll take a closer look at interchange and learn about the various ways you can keep costs as low as possible. As we learned in our last webcast, interchange is the fee assessed by the card associations and issuing banks on each transaction. The associations determine the rate schedules for each merchant type and publish those rate schedules on a quarterly basis. In each rate schedule, available to all merchants on the association's website, the fees are described by scenarios that include three elements, the merchant type, the merchant's acceptance environment, and the cardholder's choice of payment. A combination of all three elements determines the amount of interchange levied on each card transaction. In an optimal acceptance environment, the merchant pays a qualified rate for both credit and debit transactions. Debit transactions typically cost less because the issuing bank only assumes the risk of processing the transaction. Credit transactions have a higher interchange fee because the issuer has to finance the funds, collect payments from the cardholder, and generally assumes more risk all around. Each merchant's service agreement with their acquiring bank outlines the interchange fees they qualify for. But remember that these fees are quoted assuming the best case scenario in the acceptance environment. So Zach, what aspects of the merchant's acceptance environment might prevent them from qualifying for the best rates possible? Well, Beth, some things are within the merchant's control and some things are risk inherent to the type of merchant. Merchants have the greatest opportunity to qualify for the best rates if they follow the rules outlined in the interchange rate schedules published by the associations. However, some things are beyond their control, such as what card type their customers select from their wallets. For example, it is known that the fees for debit transactions are lower than credit transactions, but this only applies if the merchant has the means to validate debit card purchases by asking the cardholder to enter their PIN during the transaction. In a restaurant or hotel, transactions typically process as credit transactions. In addition, the hospitality industry also performs transactions with more risk because of the amount of time between authorization and settlement as well as the difference in the authorized and the final sale amount. Many other variables, both within and outside of the merchant's control, can cause a transaction to downgrade to a mid-qualified or non-qualified interchange fee. Thanks, Zach. Joining us again is Emmanuel Barnes, our financial correspondent. To help us understand this, Zach and Emmanuel are going to compare these shifting variables to alternating weather patterns and walk you through a few scenarios that promote desirable weather conditions, resulting in the best interchange fees. They'll also demonstrate scenarios that promote undesirable weather conditions, resulting in downgrades. Thanks, Beth. In our first example, the merchant processes a Visa card transaction with the following variables. The card is present, so the merchant swipes the card. The card presented is a standard non-rewards Visa debit card, and the merchant settles the transaction within 24 hours, and the settlement amount matches the authorization amount. So, Emmanuel, how does the weather look in this scenario? Considering the merchant actually obtained a card swipe, and there are fewer risks associated with debit card transactions, and the merchant followed the defined settlement rules, this transaction qualifies as a sunny transaction, and the merchant can expect to qualify for the best interchange rate possible. Okay. In the next scenario, the merchant processes a MasterCard transaction where the card is present and the merchant also obtains a swipe. The card presented is a rewards MasterCard credit charge, and the merchant fails to settle within the allotted settlement period, 
but the settlement amount is within the range allowed from the authorization amount. What does the weather look like in this situation? Well, it looks like a storm front has moved in, Zach. We have cloudy skies and rain showers. In this case, a downgrade occurred, resulting in a mid-qualified interchange rate because the payment type presented by the cardholder has a rewards component. The payment type is a credit transaction, which implies more risk. And the merchant did not settle within the 48 hours allotted from the time of authorization. Notice that some things were within the merchant's control and some things just were not. All right. In our next scenario, the merchant processes a Visa card transaction with the following acceptance variables. The card is not present, so the merchant manually keys in the card number. The card accepted is a standard Visa credit transaction. And finally, the merchant settles the transaction within 24 hours, but the final sale amount is 25% more than the authorized amount. What kind of weather can we expect on this interchange report? Ooh, in this case, I'm afraid we're in for some bad weather. Maybe even a blizzard or a tornado. And this is why. First, the merchant is not an online merchant, but rather has a brick and mortar location where they should require a card to swipe. Manually entering the card number because of a damaged swipe or because the card was not actually present opens the merchant and the issuing bank up to the risk of dispute. Along with that, even though the merchant settled within the allotted time frame, the final sale amount varied greatly from the original authorization, so this transaction is also very much at risk for dispute. Disputed transactions cost both the issuing bank and the merchant, as do fraudulent transactions. There are many best practices a merchant can follow to reduce as many risks as possible and keep downgrades to a minimum, though they can never have complete control. To some extent, a merchant must accept downgrades as a cost of doing business and accepting card payments. Thank you, Emmanuel, for helping us to understand how to forecast these various interchange weather scenarios. It's in the best interest of each merchant to follow best practices to increase their chances for a sunny weather report on each transaction. Sometimes nature has a way of deciding on its own. In review, some of the main variables in an acceptance environment that result in downgrades to mid or non-qualified interchange rates are debit versus credit transactions, traditional cards versus signature and rewards cards, a card that's present where a merchant swiped the card versus a card not present where the merchant manually entered the card, the amount of time between the initial authorization and the settlement of the final sale amount, the difference in the amount initially authorized and the final sale amount, online transactions where the card is not present with or without address verification services, and lastly, any transaction with data elements missing or incorrect merchant types associated with the transaction that introduce risk or qualify the merchant for higher interchange fees. This is great information. Thanks to you both for giving our merchants an easy to understand view of interchange and how conditions change daily based on what happens at the merchant location. I just have one more question for those merchants that are looking for ways to better regulate interchange fees. Do merchants have an option in their interchange pricing to balance the sunny and stormy days into a milder fee environment that's easier for them to manage? Absolutely. It is possible. In fact, we'll talk more about how merchants can factor interchange fees into their search for the best pricing structure in our next video. Thank you again, Zach and Emmanuel, for helping our merchants to better understand interchange. Join us for our next video where we'll look at what you can do to better manage your processing costs. From all of us here at MerchantLink, thanks for watching.